tell you, Belinda, that uh, your Lord's been working on your identity and your identity, your identity and your walk and your identity in the church. And the Lord says that, that, uh, that, that you're going to be more like Queen Esther. Uh, Queen Esther. Being called to the kingdom at such a time as this. And, Qu and Queen Esther was married to the king. And he, he was married to the person in the position. And she used her, her, her queenness uh, to talk to the king. And, and to be used in the kingdom. And the Lord told me that, that just to be able to you to see yourself in, in, a, in a newer identity. And you've gone through life and your identity has changed more and more and more with your walk with Christ and your identity as a Christian your identity but, but, but David had an identity as the giant killer but David had developed his identity as the king as the king and it was easy for him to kill the giants but it was harder for him to be in that position but God is going to grace you even more and more in your identity being good you, you know in the things that you've been doing but God is calling you to more you know, identity and teaching the children and God using you but God is calling you to more calling you to more as a holy woman of God as a holy woman of God as a holy woman of God and Father we just thank you for that thank you Lord thank you Jesus I said it to you and the Lord said the same thing to you Joyce your identity, you say, what's going on? What's going on? Your identity has been growing and changing, and your identity is in him and not what is around you. Mm. Your identity is in him and has identity. So go ahead and keep going in that identity, in that direction, into those new things that he's calling you to do, and that nobody can come against what God has for you what God has for you. And so you can be secure in what God has for you. Mm -hmm. And that identity is, is developing that identity yet more and more and more. And you, you've been flowing it as a teacher and, and in music. But go ahead. That's where your gift is. Your gift. And that goes for everybody here. Your gifts and callings of God are without repentance. They're, they're without repentance, and God has made you special to run your race. And you're not running anybody else's race, amen, but you're running your race. Father God, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for that identity. Yes, Lord, for, for faith. Yes, for that identity in Christ, that in Christ identity. And just keep pursuing that. Yes, keep on pursuing that. Hallelujah. Keep pursuing it. Hallelujah. And being secure in who you are in Christ. Who you are in Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And don't look to the left and don't look to the right. And But just do what Jesus, what the Father God has called you to do. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Does that bear witness in your heart? Does that bear witness in your heart? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, and his grace is there. His grace is there for more and more and more in your own uniqueness to be what God has called you to be. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Yes, and for that, yes, for that identity. Your identity has changed for the years, and you have been a deaconess. Ha, 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 devil. Ha, 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 devil, you're defeated. Hallelujah. And it doesn't matter what people say. It doesn't matter what family says or, or friends say or anybody else, what anybody else says. But your identity is in him and what God is calling you to do. So you just keep on doing what God has called you to do. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. And he has more. 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 And if you're out there, if you just grab anything that I'm saying and that bears witness with you, and you, your identity has changed too. And it has changed. And, it, it's, it, and you say, what's going on, Lord? What's going on? That's what's going on. He's changing you more 
and more and more. And you're going to give him glory. Yeah. And you're going to have that Midas touch. And whatever you touch is going to turn to gold. Hallelujah. And the people you touch are going to turn to gold. Hallelujah. And their lives are going to be changed. And you said, yeah, but Lord, this happened in the past. And Lord wants you to know there's nothing you can do about the past. Yeah. Hallelujah. But walking with the Lord, that's what's going to last. Hallelujah. It's going to last. And it's going to last. And it's going to last. And you're going to laugh. And you're going to laugh. And you're going to see God move in supernatural ways. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I said, I said, I said, I said, I said, I said, yeah, 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 you're stepping, yeah, you're stepping in new phases, new, 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 new uh, chapters of your life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And your identity. Yeah, your identity. And people are going to go, so, ooh, Phil, is that you? <laughs> and you're going to say, yes, it's me. And look what God has done in my life. Hallelujah. And he can do it for you. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, I, the Lord just told me, and you're going to be a rock, a rock for people who are around you, a rock for people who are around you and people who know you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're going to tell them about Jesus. Hallelujah. You're going to show them the way. You're going to show them the way of God's grace in you. And he's going to give you the words to speak. And, and he's, as you open your mouth, you're going to speak in those words. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We thank you. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your identity has been changing and changing and changing. Your gifts, the gifts don't change, but identity does change. And Father, we just thank you and praise you. Hallelujah for that, Lord, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're gonna say it more. They're gonna say, Grandpa, what do you think, Grandpa? What do you think, Grandpa? And you're gonna tell them what you think. Hey, but it's gonna be grace by, by the anointing of God. What do you think, uh, 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 oh man of God? What do you think? And then you're gonna be able to tell them. And you're gonna tell them, and God is gonna give you a boldness that hasn't been there before. That hasn't been there before, a boldness. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And Father, we thank you. Yes, yes. It, and your identity has been changing. Hallelujah. Yes, it has been. And, but, and you're going to become more and more comfortable. Hallelujah. In that. And you're going to be more relaxed and more happy. Hallelujah. And uh, yeah, I just see happy days ahead. <laughs> happy days ahead. Happy days. Yes, joyful days. Peaceful days. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Brother Jeff, why don't you come on down here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want you to come on down here. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I said it get If you're out here in congregation, just be praying. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Father, we just thank you. Yes, Lord. Yeah, yeah. The Lord's saying, saying that you, 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 you got it. You, you got it. You got your identity in Christ. You got it. And God is just going to use you more and more. And you're going to bless other people as you're secure in your identity in Christ. Yeah, you know exactly where you are. You know exactly. God has showed you exactly what you should be doing. And you're going to help other people going to be able to help other people with their identity. Yes, Lord, we thank you. Yes, with a long life, we're going to satisfy him and show him your salvation. And Father God, we just thank you and praise you. Hallelujah. Yes, so you just keep running your race. It's your race. It's not somebody else's race. It's your race. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And those people around you, and you can just bless your wife even more and more going to bless your children more and more and the things that you're praying about are just gonna click right in the place hallelujah thank you lord hallelujah and you'll be able to run that race you'll be able to run and not be weary and you're going to be able to walk and not faint hallelujah thank you lord. thank you jesus 
You have a good and faithful. You have good and good and faithful. You have a good and faithful servant. And see what I've prepared for you. What I've prepared for you. I've prepared for you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. I think I'm supposed to pray for you. I'm supposed to pray for you. And you, you didn't even have to get out of your seat. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, Father God, we just thank you. And you're seeing it more and more. You're seeing it. Your identity as a Christian. Your identity of who you are in Christ. As a disciple of Christ. As a learner. As a follower. And you're not going to be afraid to be identified in that manner. And people at work or wherever you go. And they might try to make fun of you. And they might try to do that. But you're just going to be secure. And even as David was attacked, and David was attacked, but he just kept on standing, securing God's destiny on his life. Amen. The wicked flee when no man pursues, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. And you'll be able to just be as bold and and, and graceful. You're going to be a graceful lion, though. You're going to be a graceful lion. (laughs) Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We're going to pray for you guys, too. Okay? Amen. And Father, we just thank you for identity. Your identity in Christ. Yep, God's been doing it. He's been doing it. Yeah, you like, yeah, what you've been going through, through this season. Yeah, it's a season of equipping. A, a season that's going to stick with you. well, what am I? What what am I? Am I an apostle, a prophet, an evangelist, a pastor, a teacher? What am I? What am I? You're a a daughter of God. You're a daughter of God. That's what you are. You're a daughter of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord, for that identity that you've given her, oh, Lord God. We thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We thank you for that identity. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, it'll last as long as God wants it to last. It'll last as God wants, as long as he wants. But you'll go through different phases of your life as Jesus tarries. Hallelujah. He'll continue to develop you even more and more and more. He's maturing you, hallelujah, so you can turn around and mature others. Hallelujah, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, I'm go pray for you. Hallelujah. Father God, we just thank you right now. Yes, Lord. Amen for that identity. Amen. That identity that you have for her. You have that new. It's new been changing and it's new. You say, what God, what are you doing? What are you doing? First I was a daughter and a, and a sister. Hallelujah. And as a wife and a mother. And Father God, we just thank you. Hallelujah. There's even more. And I was a grandmother. Hallelujah. But there's more. There's more. There's more. There's more. Giving you strength to run your race. I said to Gidina Gadana, we thank you for that grace. For that grace, for that grace. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Bernard, why don't you come down here?
Lord's working in you. He's doing it. Hallelujah, your identity in Christ and what he has for you. And sometimes you've asked the Lord. You say, you've asked him and said, Lord, what am I doing? What's going on? And, and these are good questions to be asking the Lord. And he's going to show you even more and more. He's going to show you what's important and what's not important. And you run your race. And you won't be afraid to identify, amen, with Christ. Amen, with Christ and his church and the people of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And we thank you that your identity in Christ is going to just grow more and more and more and more. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. See, and you, yeah, 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 yeah. And you'd be like, sometimes you've been like, I think I'd like to be a deacon. I think I'd like to be a deacon. Guess what? You can be a deacon. Lord, telling you now, right now. Lord's telling you right now. You can be a deacon. You can be a deacon. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Deacon King, Deacon King, hallelujah, praise God. And that goes for the rest of you too. I mean, you can be a deacon, a deacon is your identity in Christ. But you got to run your race. You got to run your race and run your pace. We, 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 we got, we, we got, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, praise God, hallelujah, thank you, Lord. Thank you. We, we got Dr. Gill in the house back there. Hey, Dr. Gill's got a new identity, don't you, Dr. Gill? Amen, praise God. Guess what? That's a good identity. Amen, that's a good identity. Amen. See, the devil would try to get us to look to the left, and he would try to get you to look to the right, but he's just trying to get you off the path, get you off the path. As long as you stick with the Lord. What happened after David killed Goliath? What happened to him? He went right back home. No, actually, not after he killed Goliath, but after he was anointed by Samuel. Samuel anointed him to be the next king of Israel. And then what happened was, uh, um, after he was anointed to be king of Israel, he went back out to watch the sheep. Was he anointed to be king? He was anointed to be king. He was going to be the next king of Israel. He was out there watching those smelly sheep. (laughs) And then, but then he took a lunch to his brothers lunch he was delivering lunch to his brothers and 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 his brothers said uh what what are you doing and especially his oldest brother Eliab and and I think Eliab was jealous that he got anointed to be king because he wanted to be anointed king don't be worried if somebody gets jealous about you or envious about you or whatever don't worry about that and then he 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 went to King Saul, he said, I've killed the lion, I've killed the bear, and I can take down this Goliath. And then, then Saul said, all right, put your my arm around him. He said, no, I can't do that. And then he confessed that he was going to slay Goliath when Goliath was, was confessing that he was going to kill him. And he said, you divide, de- defy the armies of the living God. And he took up that stone and God helped him sling that stone. And Goliath went down. And he killed Goliath and he took Goliath's sword and he cut off his head and he prophesied before that he was going to cut off his head and he cut off his head then the, the king said he was going to end up becoming really important he was going to marry his daughter but, but David didn't end up marrying his daughter he said I'm not worthy but I'm not, I'm not worthy to marry your daughter and see David held himself back already had the faith to kill a a giant, but he he didn't have faith for that king spot yet. And God's working in our hearts so that we can have faith and believe him that for that spot that he wants us to be in. Are you with me? You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And I'll pray for more of you too. Let me me preach a little bit of sermon, okay? Because it ties in exactly what we're talking about, what we're talking about today, what we're talking about today. Amen. Thank you, Joyce. Go ahead. You can dismiss the children.
stay in an attitude of worship and praise. Hallelujah. So you just keep running your race. Run your race. Are you still with me here this morning? You're not going to go home? No. The stewards don't play till 4 o'clock anyways. So we, so we got till 4 o'clock. <laughs> Pastor Rick was here yesterday. I like Pastor Rick. He was here at the men's breakfast. And he's just Pastor Rick. And he knows who he is. I like being around him yesterday. Every time I'm around him. I didn't know, no wonder I like being around him. He's older than me. He, he said he got drafted in 1969. And I was like, oh. I was like, oh, he's older than my older brother. So he's about your age, Joe, right? He was about your age or something like that. And then he said, uh, he, he's, he's not bothered about who he is. He's basically, yeah, I'm a holy man of God. I'm a holy man of God. He doesn't have a cell phone. He's one of the few people. I mean, that's what the Lord told me to too. To, he told me about you, Tim, when I was down here. He said, you're a deacon. We got Deacon Tim back there. I praise God. And that's, God's been working in his identity in his life too. Because before he was working for the city. But he don't work for the city anymore. Now he works for Jesus. A- Amen. A- Amen. We got Deacon Tim here. Yeah. So anyways, getting back to Pastor Rick. So he doesn't have a cell phone. He doesn't have a cell phone. So I always try to get a hold of him. If I try to call him, I, guess what? It's really hard to get a hold of somebody who doesn't have a cell phone. Because he's never at home. He's never at home. And, and guess what? Also, he doesn't have. He, he's just very comfortable who he is. He doesn't have a TV. He, he, he doesn't watch TV. I told Sister Belinda, I said, you changed me. Before I met Belinda, I didn't have a TV either. And they have a TV. When you get married, it changes things. <laughs> Like, how are we going to sit and watch something on TV, darling? I was like, well, no. Wait, I didn't, we didn't even have a Christmas tree or a nativity scene or anything. Thank God for Sister Cheryl. She sold us a nativity scene back in the day. She was doing Christmas around the world. And then I said, oh, we'll buy a nativity scene from Sister Cheryl. Sister Belinda was like, praise the Lord. <laughs> praise the Lord. <laughs> And, that, and then uh, I think it was later when, uh, Joy, after Joyce was born, we got a Christmas tree. And then uh, little Sidra, and then we lost the bulb one year, and we thought she ate it. Uh, you know how ba- babies crawl around in the living room? We thought she ate the Christmas bulb. We're like, oh, no! I was like, we got to destroy all the bulbs. And, and, then, and then we found it, and she, and she just had it in her mouth. And, you know, little kids put everything in their mouth. And I was like, well, we better be more careful with these Christmas bulbs and everything like that. But he, he's just very secure in who he is. No excuses, no anything. He's like, this is who I am. And he said, I know who I am. And sometimes Joyce sings that song, I know who I am, or whatever. We need to know who we are. And we need to know what race we're running. You're not running, running my race, and I'm not running your race. We all have different races. Oh, yeah, this is what the Lord told me before. My sister, God bless her, she gave me a bunch of pictures after my mom and dad died. And she saved one picture. Remember, I showed you I was in a wrestling team, I was in a football team, and everything like that. And she sent me one picture, and it wasn't one of my favorite pictures. And it's all these people who made... Uh, got all these trophies for outstanding football players. And, then, and, they, and they all got the trophies and everything. And guess what? I'm not in the picture. I thought it may be shown as I'm not in the picture. And the reason why I'm not in the picture, you want to know the reason why I didn't have in the picture? And I was really into football a whole lot. Because my father said at the time, humble people don't vote for themselves. So I didn't, and my father was on the committee that was counting the, the votes. He was on the committee. And, and my father t- t- told me, humble people don't vote for themselves. So I didn't vote for myself. And my father thought I was a better player too. And he voted, and he didn't vote for me either, which really broke my heart. And I lost by one vote. My vote for the other person caused me not to get all these awards and accolades and recognition. But I'm here to tell you today, you vote for yourself. 
You learn, you learn, so I was wondering, I said, I feel, oh, I told Faith, I said, I feel like burning that picture. I just want to burn that picture. Yeah, because it kind of made something negative happen in my life at that point. Uh, but she said, well, Dad, if it reminds you of what you shouldn't do, maybe you should keep the picture. So at this point, I still have the picture. But I, but I want to tell you today, you vote for you. Understand what I'm saying? You're running your race. You have your identity in Christ, and you vote for you. You believe in God, but you believe in you. And you believe in your kids, too. Amen. Amen. And whatever it is, if your kids made a cake for the county fair, vote for your kid's cake even if it isn't the best one. (laughs) And if you made a cake, don't be like, oh, I'm going to vote for sister so-and-so. No, you vote for your cake. Are you with me? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, amen. You're like, what? No, we don't want to have a false humility. A false humility is like, oh, I'm being humble. Because that's religious. And that is wrong. And that is wrong. So we want to we wanna do what God's called us to do. Amen? So he, Hebrews 12 verse 1 says this, Wherefore we're seeing we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. It's like in the grandstands of heaven. Penn State won yesterday. I watched the Penn State football game. I was really happy. And they beat the University of Southern California in L.A. Sorry about that, Andrew. Yeah. <laughs> And everything. But there was all people in the stands. And they were watching. Guess what? There's people watching us. We're in the leg of the race. People in heaven are watching us. And we're running a race. And it says, lay aside every weight and every sin which does so easily beset us. Let us run with patience the race that has been set before us. So we're holy women of God. Say, and holy men of God. Say, I'm a holy person of God. Amen. You confess it and you possess it. You believe it. You receive it. Amen. So run your race. And when you run your race, you run your race with patience. 1 Corinthians 9 verse 24 says, Know ye that they which run, run, in, a ra- run in a race run all. But one receives the prize, so run that you may obtain. And so run with determination, and you have to run your race the same. Like, like I, I, I don't run anymore. Sister Joyce runs, and Brother Joe used to run a lot and everything. But when I ran a race, when I ran those 5Ks and stuff, I didn't run like everybody else. And some of them, they took off right from the start, and they're blasting down the road, going, wow. I knew I couldn't do that. Because if I did that, I would never finish the race. I'd get winded in the first quarter mile and have to walk the rest of the way. <laughs> okay, so I just jogged and jogged and jogged the best I could, the way I practice, and I ran the race the best way I could, and that's the way you do it. And I was always practice, and the practice always practice kicking at the end because that's funner when you run across the finish line and, and, you, and you go kick means you run really fast. But you, when you run your race, you run with determination. Philippians 3, verse 13 says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, you got to forget your your losses. When I wrestled, I don't know if I ever told you that when I wrestled for Cal U, I got pinned a lot. I got beat. I got beat a lot. But then when I went to Penn State, they they said, you know why you're getting beat? You're doing this wrong, and you're doing that wrong, and you're doing this wrong. We're going to fix all the things that you're doing wrong. I was, I, was, I was a Christian at the time. I was like, praise the Lord. <laughs> and, you know, God wants to fix the things that we're doing wrong. Amen. And we can forget about those things which are behind. Amen. And reach forth into those things which are before. I press toward the mark of the prize of the high cone of God in Christ Jesus. So forget about what is behind. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Say that when say, I can do all things. Through Christ, who strengthens me. Amen. We can do it. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And, our, our, and therefore, our identity does change. Joyous and faith are not little girls in our church anymore. They're not little girls. 
They're not even in their 20s anymore, right? You're not in their 20s anymore. Sometimes I forget. They're not even in their 20s. They're in their 30s. Can you believe that? Boy, I'm getting old. <laughs> uh, hello? Yeah, but, uh, but that's like I said, I'm going to keep on going for Jesus. Amen. So you keep pressing on. You go for the prize. You, we're the high calling of God. 1 Corinthians 9, verse 26 says, Therefore I run thus, not with uncertainty, thus I fight, not as the one who beats the air. So we're not like beating the air, swinging and missing, swinging and missing. Right? No. We, we want to hit the target. Uh, Galatians 2, 2 says, I went up by revelation and communicated unto them the gospel which I preached among the Gentiles. But privately to them which were of reputation, lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. See, the Galatians uh, was written to the church because Judaizers came in and said, well, you, you need uh, the, 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 uh, the Jews, Jewish Christians, uh, they were saying you have to obey the law, the, the, the Mosaic law. And no, we don't. We, we're, we ha- you, what you have to do is what? Believe in Jesus. What do you have to do? Believe in Jesus. Somebody asked me of that life rescue mission. They said, how, I, how do I know if I'm on the right track? I said, whatever not of faith is sin. Whatever is not of faith is sin. So we want to run in faith. Just run in faith. And he was telling me his things and I was trying to help him. So people are not in the same race. We're not in the same race. Each race is different for each person. Uh, Matthew 7 verse 17 says this. For every good, even so, every good tree brings forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. That means people who don't produce fruit in and don't believe in Jesus, they're going to go to hell. That's what it's talking about. But we believe in Jesus. You all believe in Jesus this morning? Amen. Praise God. We've got a good bunch here. Matthew 13, verse 8 says, Other fell on into good ground and, and brought forth fruit, some a hundred, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. That's what the word of God, when it lands in your heart, and it, it can bring forth thirtyfold, sixtyfold, and a hundredfold. Now, John 15, verse 4, said, Jesus said, Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, his cast forth is the branch, and is withered, and men gather them, and cast them in the fire, and they are, are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit, so should be my disciples. In John 15, verse 16, he says, Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Listen, God chose you. Just like how God chose David and anointed him to do what he called him to do. God chose you. He chose you. And you can do it. You can do it. And have ordained you that you go and bring forth fruit and your fruit should remain. That whatsoever you should ask the Father in my name, he may give it you. And Galatians 5 verse 7 says, you did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? So run with the vision and run with strength. And run with light feet. Amen? I remember when I did run way back in high school and everything. And and when I was like a senior and a freshman in in college, that was probably when I was the fastest I ever was. They had those Pumas. I think they were Pumas. They were tennis shoes that were super light. And I bought some so I could run with light feet. I could run faster. They didn't have a whole lot of padding on them because that's why they were lighter and everything like that. But you could run really fast with those. And God wants us to be able to run with light feet, to be able to run fast and what he's called us to do. And, and run and don't step in ditches or potholes. When, when my sister came up, God bless her, she came up, we had a fun time. Belinda made spaghetti and meatballs at her house and, and everything, and I ate a whole lot and looked like I was going to have a baby, and we laughed and everything like that and everything. But I told her, I said, watch, Teresa, watch out for the potholes. Pittsburgh has a lot of potholes. 
And, 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 it rained, and she said near the end of the race, there was a big, huge pothole there, and she almost stepped in it. But she remembered what I said, don't step in the pothole, and she was okay. You know, life throws us a lot of potholes. There's a lot of potholes, and you don't want to step in those potholes because you can hurt yourself, break your ankle or whatever, you know, and don't step in. Don't be what causes problems sometimes is when we're insecure, when we're insecure. And sometimes, you know, in my life too, I've had to work through my insecurities. Don't become insecure. If somebody else gets a, a better car than you, should you be upset? No. You're next in line. It doesn't matter. Somebody has a bigger church than me, should I be insecure? No. We're next in line. Would God run out of sinners or something? No. <laughs> no. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? No, we, we shouldn't be insecure. We shouldn't be insecure. Even if you receive some type of correction. You know, I, 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 by the grace of God, I got to uh, work under Pastor Mark Butler for five years. And you think in the five years that maybe he corrected me once in a while? He pretty much corrected me every single day. Oh, pretty much every day. He would say, well, you know, you did this wrong, you did that. Why don't you do this and that? And I would say, okay, thank you very much. Thanks for telling me. You're like, what? Because how are you going to learn? The Bible says, whom the Father loves, them he corrects. But a, a father who doesn't correct their kid doesn't love them. But I knew Pastor Mark loved me, and Sister Esther would correct me too sometimes. And correct me, I'd be like, okay. That wasn't a big thing. You know, you know what I mean, a big thing. Just could be a little thing. You're like, well, what do you mean? I don't know. Back then I was, you know, more cleaning bathrooms and stuff. And you might say, well, I don't want you to use this. I want you to use this. You know, don't want you to put this toilet paper in there. I want you to put that toilet paper in there. That's what I mean by it's corrected. You know, some people have a cow when you tell them stuff like that. They go, hop, 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 hop. Hop, 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 hop. How dare you tell me? <laughs> don't be insecure. We shouldn't be insecure. I, I preach that to me a lot too. Don't be insecure. Don't be insecure. It's not what you could do. It's what? It's what you should do. I see people say, well, I could have done that. And I, no, no, that doesn't count. It's not what you should do. I, I mean, it's not what you could do. It's what you should do. You should do what God wants you to do. And it doesn't matter even if people don't treat you right. Remember Jeremiah, the prophet, of God, he was prophesying to the nation of Israel. And he said, God, I'm done prophesying them. They don't like what I say, and I'm not gonna say it anymore. And God was like, that's cool, right? No. <laughs> he said, no, it was, it was like a fire shut up in his bones. And he had that Holy Ghost fire shut up in his bones, and he had to say it. Because if you're not careful, sometimes you can get upset at people and you might not even want to talk to them. But it's not up to you. Remember Jesus Christ? What? He was dying on the cross, right? We've read this. Hopefully you've read it. He's dying on the cross, right? And he's dying on the cross. And, he, and, and did he say, Father, I forgive them. Is that what he said? No. No, he didn't say that. He said, Father, please forgive them. For they know not what they do. You forgive them. And for in order for him to pray that prayer, he had to already forgive them. Right? Didn't he have to already forgive them? Yeah. Did anybody ever do you wrong? Oh, yeah. yeah. Maybe you wrote a book. <laughs> How people done me wrong. <laughs> By Pastor Chris DeMarc. <laughs> No, 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 no. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Right? Yeah, amen. Amen. As the heavenly Father, don't carry anything in your past. I thank God for my family carrying things in the past. So you have to let those, those past things go and have a new identity. Because some of us weren't treated 
like, uh, how can I say it? Some of you maybe here weren't loved by your father, your earthly father. You know, we have kids in our church that come to our church sometimes, and they weren't loved by their earthly father either. But you know what? Our heavenly father loves them. And our heavenly father, they were treated like orphans. And you have to let it go. You know? Whenever we went shopping or to the mall or something like that, I always made sure I was in the car. You know why I made sure I was in the car? Because I knew they were going to leave without me if I wasn't. You know, understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And, uh, but I, I, have to let that, I had to let that go. I had to let God heal me. You, you know what I mean? So guess what? I always made sure I showed up for dinner. Because if I didn't show up for dinner, I probably wasn't going to get any. That's the way I felt. You, you know? And my brothers and sisters are like, no, they loved you. They loved you. They loved you. Well, whatever. Well, praise the Lord. They love them. <laughs> you know, I'm, I had a bit, long time, my mom said, because I was an unwanted child. I was the third child. I wasn't a planned child. I thank God my mom didn't get an abortion. I, she had enough sense not to get an abortion. And I thank God for that, that she loved me enough not to do that. And she said, well, you weren't planned, but I still loved you, you, you know, and everything like that. And that's where you got to come. I mean, she's in heaven. I'm not going to hold anything against her. I'm not going to hold anything against my father. Amen. You have to forget the past. Because some of the things in our identity can go way back. It can go way back. Yeah, you know, and we got to let those things go. Amen. But our worship makes us sure. You say, how do you get over that? Just worship God. Joyce was up here. We were worshiping God this morning. Just worship God. That's what I'm going to focus on next week. Just worship him. I'm going to focus this on Wednesday. Just worship him. Because when you're worshiping him, you can't grumble. Right? You ever worship the Lord and, and grumble at the same time? It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen at all. And just worship him and the, and the God will give you the joy of the Lord. And the joy of the Lord is your strength. And God wants to take you to a higher level. Amen. And Galatians 6, 6 says, Let him that is taught in word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For what's for man soweth, then shall we reap. And he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. And he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So let's not be weary in well-doing. Praise God. Like yesterday, Pastor Rick, at the end, he said, all you guys here, if you didn't get my book, come on out to my trunk of my car, and I'm going to give you my book for free. And the guys were like, yay! And they were going out this trunk. And I said, guys, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. Just remember, bless them. And they were like, oh. A lot of guys were like, they were like, oh. I'm like, but I was trying to help them. I'm talking like their daddy, you know. Like, it's just not getting the free ice cream cone. You know, you got to thank Uncle Bully Bob for the free ice cream cone. <laughs> Give him a hug. Right? It's more blessed to take than, than to give. No, what does it say? It's more blessed to give than receive. Pastor Rick knows that. That's why he called everybody out to his car to give him a free book. But we don't want to be the, uh, be the victim. We want to be what? The victor. So I'm, so I'm the victor. And not the victim. So I'm a winner. And not a loser. So I'm the head. And not the tail. I'm blessed coming in. I'm blessed going out. I'm blessed in the city. And I'm blessed in the field. I am blessed. Hallelujah. 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 My mom used to say, Chris, what are you going to say? Uh, uh, um, you know, nobody loves me. I'm just going to go eat worms. I'm just going to go eat worms. I said that so much. I said, nobody loves me. I'm going to go eat worms, my mom. And so I went out in the backyard and I ate a worm. <laughs> and guess what? It didn't taste very good at all. 
And I said, I'm not going to run away and eat worms. I'm going to be at the dinner table. This is the, listen, this is the dinner table. We're, we're in church right now. We're at the dinner table. We're eating the good word of God. We're receiving from God. We're being blessed. We're being blessed. Amen. So Psalm 25 verse 2 says, O oh God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. That now my enemies triumph me, over me. Psalm 91 verse 1 says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Say it with me. Say, I, I say He is my refuge. He is my fortress. He is my God. In Him will I trust. Amen. A amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And Isaiah 40 verse 29 says, For those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So we just need to wait upon the Lord. Amen. And God will renew our strength. Amen. And you're not going to faint. Listen, you're going to make it. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're going to make it. Go ahead. You're going to make it. You're going to make it. You're going to make it. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's good news. Joel 3 verse 10 says, beat your plowshares in the swords and your pruning hooks in the spears. Let the weak say, I'm strong. Say, I'm strong. I don't care how you feel. You just say, I'm strong. Say, I'm strong. Amen. Uh, uh, Romans 4, verse 17, it says, As it is written, I've made thee a father many nations before whom he believed, even God who quickens the dead and calls those things which be not as though they were. So God calls us kings and priests. And what do kings do? They reign in life. We're going to reign in life. Say, I'm reigning in life. A amen. And Matthew 6, says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Matthew 5, verse 6 says, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Hebrews eleven six 6 says, But without faith it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God be must be believe that he is, and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So God is going to reward you. Amen. 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 I, I, I've been thinking about Brother Joe Camp was here too in our church. You, you know, he's, his identity in Christ has been changed. His identity in life has been changing. And I pray for him even though he's out of town. Because I love my brother. I pray for him. His identity. He's not Joey anymore. He's not the janitor of the church anymore. He, at one point, he was a youth pastor. He's not Joey, the youth pastor anymore. He's not Joey, the assistant pastor. Actually, the closest thing probably is he's Reverend Joe Campus, the, the traveling teacher. That's, that's what he is. And his identity is... So don't, don't treat him like the assistant pastor. Because he's not the assistant pastor. Joyous is the assistant pastor. Faith's our youth pastor. Sister Belinda is the co-pastor of the church. So when she talks to you, she's not trying to cause troubles. She's a very nice person. And she gives me kisses all the time. <laughs> But she only gives me kisses if I treat her nice. And if I don't treat her nice, watch out, baby. <laughs> you all laughing because you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and you husbands say, hey, man. <laughs> he, but you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, praise God. You're going to make it. He, he's going he's gonna to make it too. Now, Hebrews 11, 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And we don't want to hold anybody back. Hold anybody. We might have some millionaires sitting in here today. Amen. Amen. Becoming millionaires. And, and that's in your heart and God put it there. I hope you do become a millionaire. Amen. 
Isaiah 1 verse 19 says, if he be willing and obedient, you should eat the good of the land. But if he refuse and rebel, you should be devoured with the sword for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Amen. So we're not going to do that. Amen. It says in Zechariah 4 verse 6, it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Amen. And when you come under authority, you have authority. See, remember David killing the Goliath. That was awesome, right? But what did David do? First, he went to King Saul and he said, hey, can I go King Goliath, kill Goliath? And King Saul, yeah, go and the Lord be with you. If somebody ever said that to me, can I go kill Goliath? I'd say, yes, go and the Lord be with you. Can I give you $10,000 to the church, the blessed the church? I'd say, yes, and the Lord be with you. Like, what? what? How's that connected? It's connected. It's connected. Amen. Hebrews 13, 17 says this, what obey your spiritual leaders. They got, uh, our ladies from YWAM probably understand that. Obey your spiritual leaders and do what they say. The work is to watch over your souls that they might be accountable to you. And God will give them reason uh, to do this with joy and not with sorrow because that would be, certainly not be to your benefit. And Re Revelation 12 verse 10 says, And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Now has come salvation and strength and kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before the, our God day and night. The devil is the accuser of the brethren. Let's never agree with the devil. Amen. Let's not uh, accuse our brethren. Our brethren is our brothers and sisters in Christ. Let's not accuse them. Amen. Amen. Be a son of God. Be a child of God. May 1 John 3 verse 1 says, Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. This is a good place for our identity. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Now we are sons of God, and doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for he will see him as he is. So you don't always have to figure out, well, I'm a, am I an apostle? Am I a prophet? Am I an evangelist? Am I a pastor? Am I a teacher? You're a son of God. You're a child of God. And just do what a child, what does a child of God do? He, he listens to his heavenly father. And he does what his heavenly father says. Hebrews 12 verse 7 says, If you endure chastening, God deal with you as with sons, for whom son the father the chasten not. But if you are without chastisement, whereof are you partakers, then are you bastards and not sons. And But we're sons. Galatians 4 5 says, To redeem that are under the law, to whom might receive the adoption of his sons. Because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Romans 8, verse 14 says, For as many are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Amen, that's you. I'm, Father, I pray that your saints here will be led by the spirit of God, that you would lead them and guide them in your way. Amen. Romans 8, 19 says, For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. Acts 2, verse 17. I see, the, like I was told you about Pastor Rick, and I know why he lives the, the way he does. Because then when he goes to pray for somebody, he wants to have nothing blocking his faith for them to be healed. Nothing. He can't say, well, I watched that TV show yesterday. He didn't watch any TV show yesterday. You know? Or whatever. I saw that on my iPhone. He didn't see anything on his iPhone. He don't have an iPhone. He don't have a cell phone. Yeah. Amen. So there's no blockage. Acts 2 verse 17 says, And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, that I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. And what? Our sons and daughters. Are you a son of God? Are you a daughter of God? Then you're going to prophesy. Amen. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. John 1.12 says, But as many as received him, 
To them he gave the power to become sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And that we've received him, and we have the power to be sons of God. So that's what the Lord wanted me to share today. Anybody else here? Anybody else here today? And you, you're not, you don't know whether or not you're saved. Anybody here, here today and you don't know whether or not you're saved? How many are saved? Raise your hand. Okay, praise God. How many have a broken arm? <laughs> praise God. Hallelujah. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Joyce, go ahead and just play a little bit. Amen. I know I didn't lay hands on everybody, everybody here, but I know a lot, a lot of you here have, have different things. I know Sister Danielle is here, and she's had different seasons and different jobs. Now you're like a supervisor person, right, and stuff like that. Before she was working with uh, early childhood, right? You got your master's degree now? Do you have your master's degree? Sister Danielle has got her master's degree. Woo! Give it up for Sister Danielle. Amen. And, and, and she knows what she's doing. And the Lord told me this. He told me even more. He said, I need to trust you more. That's what he's been talking to me more. And I need to trust you more than what you're good at and I'm not good at. You'd be like, oh, praise the Lord, Pastor. He got a revy. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm what to do. Hello? Amen. That means I can't, do, not that I necessarily do it anymore. Like Brother Joe played the guitar on Wednesday night, didn't he? He played the guitar on Wednesday night. But, but, but years ago, I started out playing guitar, but that is not as much as my identity anymore. You, you understand what I'm saying? I'm not the guitar player and worship guy, but I still worship the Lord. And same thing. You do the same thing. Sister Danielle probably still wants his little people once in a while. Do you? Do you? She wants his little people, but she's helping moms and do things and stuff like that. So our, our identity changes, but you don't want to change who you are as a person. David was a worshiper when he started out as a teenager. And he was still a worshiper when he was the king. And he brought the Ark of the Covenant into Jerusalem because he was a worshiper. But his wife didn't like that. Michael, his wife, didn't like David being a worshiper. And he said, you're done. That's what he said to his wife. I mean, but he had like 27 wives or something. So it was easier for him to say that. <laughs> but don't ever lose who God wants you to be and who you are. I remember Doug Jones said that. He said, he's Doug Jones, man of God, man of God, Doug Jones, man of God, Doug Jones. And at one time he was upset about something. And the Lord asked him, he said, what happened to Doug? with me what, what happened to Chris I think about that you know and I struggled in my identity at first I remember my brother uh, I, we, still, we were in church and our pastor said we're going to change some of your names and so they quit calling me Chris they called me Christopher which means Christ bearer because up to that point I wasn't quite the Christ bearer you know, I was just good old Chris and, and, and my brother Mike Mike's Michael's name was Mike. We called him Mike all the time. And Michael was who is like God. You know, he started acting like God when we started calling him Michael. And then we, and then when they called me Christopher, I started bearing Christ with everybody and everything like that. Like how Peter's name was first, what was his name? He was, his name was Simon. And, and then his, his name was called Peter, which is Rock. And we, we got a Rocky here. Praise God for Brother Rocky. And I believe that he's a rock to his family. He's, he's Brother Rock. Amen. That's what I'm saying as far as our, our identity of who we are in Christ. And who we are. And don't lose who you are in Christ. This bless you today. This, this bless you. God's been speaking to me this over and over and over and over and over and over and over. I'm probably going to be talking about it again. Because it's going to help our church. Because you can't be who you're not, but God's called you to be somebody. And if you don't know who you are, ask the Lord to show you who you are. Ask him to show you. Because I've been asking him to show me more about who I am. So, Father God, we ask that you would show each and every person who they are, what their role is. Father God, and what you have, want them to do. 
in your body, in the body of Christ. Father God, yes, Lord, we pray that your word would go forth and not return void, but accomplish what you please, and it's a prosper way to you, Son. In Jesus' name we pray, and everybody said, amen and amen. I love you. God bless you. I'll lay in your dismissal.